Good evening, or good morning, or good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> so Lars is on vacation, so I have the joy of leading the meditation today. He said he really wanted to do the meditation, but I told him, Lars, you need to take a vacation. So um, I think it's the third evening for the, the module 11. And um, it's a, a bit of a different meditation this evening. So it's this, it's a bodhicitta meditation, basically. So it's called the, the ever-flowing nectar of bodhicitta. Um, it's uh, Chinrezig meditation. So on the, the eight verses of uh, thought transformation. Um, and for the intensive practice day, which... I think everyone knows we rescheduled it to uh, August 14th. We'll do a more elaborate version because we can do a, we can spend a bit more time with it. Obviously on, on Thursdays, we only have about 20, 25 minutes. So we do a, a bit of a shortened version. Uh, so yes, so get started and find a, a comfortable position with meditation. And also bring to mind um, an altruistic motivation and, and think about why, why are we doing this meditation? Why, why are you doing it for yourself? To become more, more calm, more happy, to, to help others, to become a better person, to become enlightened, to eventually lead all sending beings to enlightenment. So I think we all have our own personal motivation. So we can bring that to mind. And we can also bring to mind the, the ultimate bodhicitta motivation from our Mahayana Buddhism perspective. That that we're meditating so that we become Buddhas, we become enlightened, we become free of samsara and, and can lead all sentient beings to enlightenment. And with that motivation, we, we bring to mind this um, beginningless lifetimes. So this, this samsaric cycle of, of beginningless lifetimes that I experienced the, the general sufferings of sam, samsara for number, numberless lifetimes, especially in the lower realms. So there's no suffering that I've not experienced. And when we think that, that there's no suffering that I've not experienced, maybe we have a bit of fear or a, a sadness to think that we've experienced countless sufferings. But this becomes our inspiration to say that I no longer want to allow this. I want to stop this cycle. Stop the disturbing thought, the, the uh, unsubdued mind. So as long as that I continue to follow the, uh, the disturbing thoughts or the, the, the evil mind, if you will, then I will not be free.
I think about it from the depth of my heart. There's no words for it. So if I think I'm unable to, to eat or sleep because of this thought of living in the samsaric world. Or that it even makes me completely sick to where I want to vomit uncontrollably. This is this, this mind that wishes to renounce samsara and to be free of samsara. And right now I have incredible fortune having this human rebirth. I have some simple happiness. I have a place to live, I have food. I'm not living in a war zone. I'm not an animal. So I have all the right conditions. To truly develop my mind. And I can recall that all the, the sentient beings in the world, at one time they've been my mother. There's not a single one that has not been my mother. And they've shown me the kindness of the mother. So I have this, this wish to repay the kindness. And I can also see that there are so many sentient beings that are suffering all around me. My friends, my family, animals. And they're constantly creating the causes for more suffering. And if a mother's suffering is not alleviated by her own child, who else is going to do it? It's gotta be me. And this is our bodhicitta motivation, our aspiration. And we make the request, we make the request to, to Buddha, the most compassionate one, to please extend the holy hand and lead me and all other sentient beings into the blissful state, into the blissful realm after this life, and to be with the virtuous friend and quickly lead us to Buddhahood. And with making this request, we, we imagine, we visualize that Chenrezig uh, Guru Avilakshvara accepts your request and, it, and sends you infinite number of nectar rays into your body, shooting light rays coming from Chenrezig. 
in these light rays, they, they purify all your obscurations, all your negative karma, all your diseases, all your pains, all the harm from spirits in an instant, instantly purified. And your body becomes clear like a crystal, like a hollow body, just a silhouette. And then Guru Avagalakshvara melts into light. and absorbs into you through the crown of your head. And your body, speech, and mind, they become inseparable with the guru, inseparable with the, the holy body, the speech and the mind of the guru. Just as when we pour clean, clear water into a glass of water, the water merges into one without dis distinction of the two different waters, it becomes one. And we'll recite his mantra, Omani Kemerun. And we'll continue to recite it silently as we visualize. Visualize this absorption into being one with the Guru of Compassion. Continue to recite the, the mantra. You visualize that you appear in the form of Guru Avalokshara, and beams of light radiate from your body. And each beam at its tip is Guru Avalokshara. And at the end of each of the beam, with each guru at the end of the beam, they're sitting just above every sentient being in the universe. So you can imagine all the sentient beings all around you, beams of light coming out of your heart. And guru is sitting on top of those sentient beings at the end of those light beams. And the nectar flows down from those images of the guru and they purify the obscurations, all the negative karma, all the delusions of all sentient beings. And they're completely purified.
and Guru Avalokshara dissolves into light and absorbs into each and every single one of the Sindhi beings and becomes one. So you can really feel it in your heart, all these beams emanating from your, from your holy body, sending out the love and the compassion, purifying all the negative karma of all sending beings. We think that may all the suffering and the causes of suffering of all sending beings ripen upon me right now. And may all sending beings receive all my happiness and virtue. And even though it's up to me alone to, to bear this burden of, of eliminating the suffering of all mother sentient beings, right now I'm not capable of doing it. I can't relieve all the suffering. I can't even relieve my own suffering. If, if I'm able to receive the enlightened body, the enlightened mind, the enlightened speech, then just one ray of this light, this enlightened light, this could ripen the minds of countless sentient beings. So to, to release all other sentient beings from suffering and lead them to the sublime happiness of enlightenment, I first, I have to become Buddha. I have to become enlightened. And the attainment of Buddhahood, it's not without, uh, without causes or conditions. The principal cause of Buddhahood is the two, uh, the two bodhicittas. So I make this determination that I'm going to practice the profound oral teachings on transforming the mind in the bodhicitta.
and we dedicate the the merit that we've generated by contemplating the two bodhicittas working on our minds developing this aspiration to to become buddha to become better individuals not just for our own sake but for the sake of others by really transforming our mind to to cherish to cherish others more than ourselves Thank you very much.